The first and most simple way that we can add some bass is to use a bass loop. So if we have a track here, so I've just lined up Benny, our drummer, and Benny's on the skins, he's gonna play this. So we've just got a bit of a funky groove here. We've got ourselves set here at 110. We're in C major, everything's ready to rock and roll. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click in the top right here. We're gonna go to Apple Loops and we need ourselves some bass. So we're gonna go to the, uh, the filter by here. We want all of our sound packs. So we'll click there, we'll go all sound packs. And uh, if we just type in here, bass, B-A-S-S, -S, and hit the uh, enter key there, we've got a whole bunch of different bass sounds that we can go with here. And uh, there's a whole bunch of packs, there's a whole bunch of sound library packs, plenty of stuff here that you can check out. Now, uh, one that I really like is from the Oak Felder pack, one of our producer packs here in GarageBand, and it's called this, the Bowtie Bass. And I reckon it's gonna go nicely with Benny here. So let's preview it first by just tapping on it. Yeah. All right, and then we just tap and hold and drag and drop it into a fresh track. And now, Benny's got some company, Oak Felder on the bass. Very cool. Now, you might have noticed here, I've given myself one bar lead in here. That's just sort of good habit that I get into to make sure that if when I'm recording my bass, I can actually jump on in on this one. So all we need to do here is reduce the end of this one and then bring it out here so it's actually starting on that second bar so that we've got eight bars of, uh, of Benny and Oak and uh, then this is what our intro is going to sound like. There you go. There's a groove out of the box. You could literally start with that and then just start playing and building your track around it. But I'm going to show you a bunch of different ways that we can create bass here in GarageBand. The second way is to use our virtual bass. So we've also got the ability to add in a virtual bass here in GarageBand. So let's hit the plus button. Let's go to our bass. Now, the easiest way to do this is to hit the more sounds button here in the bottom right. So we're going to tap on that one. And here's all of our different bass sounds. You've got your Liverpool, your Muted, your P-Bass, your Picked. And if you scroll across, yes, we've even got an Upright. Yeah, very cool. We'll show all of these uh, in just a moment. But for this one, let's go the P-Bass. I think we want a little bit of a P-Bass kind of sound here. And we're going to have... Yeah, very cool sound. It's actually a, a, a highly, a, a very well sampled P-Bass sound. Now here in your virtual bass, you've got a couple of ways to do it. You can use your notes. So here, if you know where your C is, you could actually tap there. So we could play in a, we could play in a riff like that. You can also use chords. So if you don't know, you could just use you know that you're going to be in the C chord because we know that our, we're in the, the key of C at the moment with our loop. You've also got your autoplay, so you can turn the autoplay up here and then your bass is going to play along there and uh, you've got more complicated autoplays as you go through. I reckon that one might be cool to just sort of try out here. So let's hit the record. And this way, even if you don't know where your C's, your C's from your G's, you'll be able to use this same method. So let's hit the record button and whack on this C and see what it sounds like. So, yeah, it doesn't really go in with our Oak Felder sound, does it? But again, and it, we started it on, on bar one there. We need to just drag it across to bar two to make sure it's in the right zone here. So if we play this and say we mute out Oak uh, from our original loop. Not bad. And of course, we can change the sound. So if we didn't like that P bass sound, and if we instead wanted to say the Liverpool bass, we can come here, tap on this one, and uh, change it up to a bit of a Liverpoolian bass, and we'll get this sort of sound. Yeah. A little bit less in the way of, uh, of the, the, the fuzz that you get in that bass. So that's a pretty good and pretty easy way to add that. Because I don't really like that autoplay sound, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play in a bit of a bass sound. So I'm just going to delete this. So I'm going to play something that's going to work with this Oak Felder bass. So if we tap again here on our instrument, I'm going to have to lean in here, go back into no notes mode, and I just want to play. 
I'm just going to play a very basic uh, bass uh, loop here. So if we hit record on this bar two, and I'm going to use my thumbs because bass players always use their thumbs. All right, there we go. We'll hit the pause button. So we've just put in a very basic sort of bass sound here. So there's our uh, Liverpool bass. If we solo it, it's this. Just a nice sort of bass sound. And this one's actually going to play a little bit nicer with our original bass here. So we can start layering up a bass sound. Now, because we've only done that for four bars, we can just tap on this and hit the loop button. And like magic, we've got our eight bar bass loop here. So there's two ways to go. You've got your loops here at Apple, loops in GarageBand. You've got your virtual bass. Let's move on to our next option. Number three is to use some imported sounds. So you can actually import any WAV file, MP3 file, AIF file into GarageBand and use that as your bass sound. So the, the site that I recommend for this is called freesound.org. So if we actually jump over to Safari, we'll go to our web browser here and we won't go into StreamYard, but here I am, here's one I prepared earlier. I've got it here to freesound.org. And what you can do is you can sign up for a free account at freesound.org. And if you search sound, so in this case, I just know that I'm in 110 BPM. So I've searched bass and I've searched 110 BPM. And I hit enter on that one. And it's going to jump in and start searching for some sounds. And uh, I can grab any of these that I like. So here's this baseline synth 110 BPM. Uh, if we tap on this one, Let's, uh, let's preview this sound and see what it's going to sound like. So if we hit the uh, play button here, that's uh, a different kind of sound. So maybe we wouldn't, we wouldn't go with something like that. Let's just go back because I think I saw this one. Yeah, what about this electric bass guitar loop? Let's tap on this one. And if we hit play on this, this one could work a little better, right? So if we want to use this in our GarageBand project, it's as simple as hitting the download button here in Safari. Now you do have to be in Safari. It has the best download manager in iOS. So we're going to hit download and uh, it is going to download. You can see in the top right here, it started downloading. I definitely haven't tried this before in, in testing. There it is, it's downloaded. It's in our downloads folder. So we're ready to import this into GarageBand. So if we swap back over to our GarageBand project, we can go to our loops icon here. This time, instead of Apple Loops, we're going to go to Files and we're going to browse files, browse items from our Files app to jump in and try and find this one. Now, for whatever reason, there's something in Garage in uh, in Apple in iOS at the moment that it doesn't download to the Downloads folder. It downloads here into your default files directory here in iCloud Drive, which is a bit weird, but we'll go with it for now. So we just need to tap on this one to import it. It's going to bring that loop that we downloaded into GarageBand. There it is. And now all we need to do is to preview it. We tap it. Tap again to go off. And let's just drag this in to a blank track right here on number two. And because we know this is a 110 BPM, Check it out. It's going to line right up there. And then all we need to do is tap again and loop it. And there you go. We've got a bass loop. So uh, let's mute out our first two bass lines and see if we were going to be using this imported bass. We've now just added a brand new, fresh, completely different sound. <laughs> And it sits nicely in there with Benny. Like, that's a nice groove that we have with there. Will it work with our other bass sounds? Uh, let's try it. Absolutely not. Why? Because it's in a different key signature. So that's the sort of thing that you do have to think about with this. And that's why I say, if you're using loops, bring in the loops first and then build the rest of your sound around that loop. So we're not going to use that one in our end product here because it's not going to work. But it's a cool option that you have there if you wanted to try that one out. Next up is using a real bass guitar. So if you have an audio interface, some way to plug your guitar in to your iPhone or iPad, and there's heaps of information here on the channel as well as at my gear guide at studiolivetoday.com slash gear. So I'm using the Steinberg UR22C and I've got my bass plugged in to the second input here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the plus button here. And this time, instead of going to the bass sound over here, I'm gonna to go to the bass amp simulator here. So so what I'd suggest again is hit on the more sounds in the bottom right, 
Go back to your main categories at the top. And here you see, we've got a heap of bass sounds. You've got clean bass, you've got distorted bass, you've got process bass, and we've even got this bass amp boutique pack. So there's a heap of extra settings here. If you don't have all these, go to your sound library, download the bass amp boutique. So what do we want for this one? I think we want something uh, clean for this one, but we want something that's gonna be a little bit interesting to go with this. Why don't we go with, uh, with the slippery lows or the sound check? Let's try the slippery lows. Now, to get this set up, we need to make sure that we have this set to the right input. So to do that, we tap or click on the little jack here. We're going to make sure that this is input two because I'm in the second input, the, uh, the instrument jack on my audio interface. And then tap it again and hit the monitor button. And if all has lined up, if the universe is with me, it works. It's not working. So we have to uh, go back and work out why that is not working. There you go. It is coming through there. You can see we've actually got that there but we're not getting any sound through. So it's definitely coming through. So it's just my audio output that's not working. So we just need to unplug. Bear with me for a moment, because sometimes we just need to unplug and replug the audio interface. There you go, you get the test pattern. That looks cool, doesn't it? So unplug and replug, and we should get the, uh, the little thing popping up that's gonna say monitoring. Turn on monitoring. There you go. I deliberately did that so that you'd be able to see how it can sometimes not work. So if your audio interface is ever doing that, you can't hear the output, turn it off and on. Just unplug it, replug it. You'll be good to go. So we've now got the modern stack here. Let's, uh, let's go with maybe a process sound, something a bit funky here. What about filter funk? This could be fun. Yeah, I reckon this could be some fun. Let's, uh, let's have some fun with this funky bass. Now, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to mute out the other basses just so I'm not distracted by them. Turn this up on the uh, output gain so I can hear myself a little bit better. Hit the record button and let's uh, play us some bass. A little bit of bass there on it. Not quite slap bass. I can't slap it a bass. But there you go. There is our bass line ready to rock and roll. So now if we play this one back. There you go. We've got some real bass sound here in our GarageBand project. Pretty darn funky. Now, the cool thing is here, of course, because we've recorded this in, we can change this bass sound to anything we like. So we can uh, tap on the bass there. And instead of this filter funk, what if we did want to go back to a clean sound and just wanted this sort of barely phased sound, something a little bit more subtle? Let's take a listen to this one. Let's change it up. What if we wanted uh, something uh, really different? <laughs> we definitely don't want that dispelling delays. That was a bad one. What about 80s dreams? This one could be cool. I'm, I'm thinking we've got some, uh, some delay and some yeah, chorus in this one. Not bad. So yeah, there's plenty of options that you have in there. Now, the other thing that uh, you can do is use not only just the, the built-in bass amp sounds, but you can add your own bass plugins. So there's a heap of cool bass plugins that you can use. The one that I recommend is the Mammoth Bass, and I won't show it in this one, but there's a video that I'll link down below where you can check that one out. So if, you, if there aren't enough cool bass sounds in here and you want even more bass sounds, there's other cool bass amp sims that you can try here in GarageBand. One final bonus tip here when it comes to bass here in GarageBand is that we can actually use our bass amps with our regular virtual bass. So if you don't want to use loops, if you don't have your own bass and you're a bit sick of the old Liverpool sound, so this is the one we did before. What if we want this sound, but we want it to go through this amp? Well, there's a cool little workaround that we can do with that. So what we need to do is actually tap on this Liverpool bass and we're gonna hit the merge button here. So we'll hit that merge button and that's going to bring this menu up. We just want that one. You can merge multiple tracks, but we just want this Liverpool bass. We're gonna hit the merge button. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna turn that Liverpool bass into an audio track. So we'll turn it down a bit because it does normalize the volume up to the loudest it can be. And now,
But here's the cool thing. If we just grab this base and we duplicate that out, we've now got a blank base track here. We can just move this audio file onto that base amp. And now if we use this one instead, take a listen to this. We've now got that virtual bass sound, but going through an amp. And now you can come in here and change this to your heart's content. So if you want this on one of these cool process, you want this on the filter funk, you can actually use the filter funk with your virtual bass. So there you go. Even if you don't have your own bass, you can't plug in, you can't play a lick to save yourself, you can use your virtual bass, turn it into a bass amp sound, and you'll be good to go with your bass sounds here in GarageBand.